Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Star Trek The Original Series Season 2. This is episode 25 and it's called Bread and Circuses. This feels like a very strange title to me. I have no idea where this is going to go, but I am very intrigued. Are we going to see any clowns? Any trained animals? Rings of fire? Will we be provided with peanuts for snacking? Let's find out as we watch some more Star Trek today. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode with me. Hope you guys are going to enjoy it. And I'll see you guys in the comments. Space debris comes from the survey vessel, the SS Beagle. Standard orbit around planet. There may be survivors there. I hope so. Maybe they started a circus. Commanded by Jim, I believe you knew him. Of course Captain Jim knew R. him. Captain R.M. Merrick. Jim knows everybody. Yes, at the Academy. He was dropped in his fifth year. It's a news broadcast using a system I think they once called video. They don't use video anymore? What do they call it now? Reasonable disobedience by well-treated, well-protected, intelligent slaves. The arena game last night. The first heat involved amateurs. My goodness. For a few moments. Mm. Violent planet. Transmission loss, sir. Shall I try to get it back? I think I've seen enough. What are we seeing? 20th century Rome? Mm. Flight officer William B. Harrison of the SS Beagle. There were some survivors down there. See, when we watched the episode called Arena, this is what I thought we were going to get. Like a Coliseum type, you know, duking it out in the arena. Ooh, two moons. And a familiar looking landscape. You could have selected a more convenient place, Mr. Spock. We should not be observed. Look at them just shuffling their way down. Containing substantial amounts of carbon monoxide. The word was smog. I had no idea you were that much of a historian, Doctor. I am not, Mr. Spock. I was simply trying to stop you from giving us a whole lecture on the subject. Don't be so grumpy, Bones, okay? I'm not a historian, I'm a doctor. You could hardly claim to be an angel with those pointed ears, Mr. Spock, but say you landed someplace with a pitchfork. <laughs> oh, what the heck? Hands in the air! Oh, well, so much for being undetected. Complete Earth parallel. The language here is English. A parallel Earth. What do you call those? I call them ears. <laughs> be funny. Never. Never. I should kill you here. Septimus would probably be displeased. Move. Where is the circus? Keep always in your mind, Flavius, that our way is peace. Their way is peace, but they're running around with rifles? It's better to kill a few of them than all of us. I can prove we're telling the truth. Lock in on my transmission beam. Scan us. How many of us are there? Twelve, Captain. Good, Scotty. The Enterprise is our ship, somewhere at sea. Tell me the Empire has a device like that, Flavius, and you may kill them. Otherwise, accept them as friends. Friends, yes. So they're slaves hiding from their slavers. But on this earth, Rome never fell. Okay. Rome that never fell. The stars. Lights shining through from heaven. It is where the sun is. Captain, I thought you might find this interesting. Oh, actual Spartans. Fascinating. The Jupiter 8. Mars toothpaste. Mars toothpaste? Neptune bath salts. When I was a senator, I worshipped them too. But I heard the words of the sun. I became a brother. For that, they made me a slave. We must go into the city. We know that one of our missing friends was seen there recently. Perhaps you know his name. Merrick. Captain Merrick. Do they like him, or...? First citizen. Butcher. Doesn't sound like the same, man. They don't like him. I was there when he became Lord of the Games. Lord of the Games. You are no friends of ours. Septimus, will you help us to get to the truth of all this? I must discuss it with the others. Were you told why Merrick was dropped from the Space Academy? He failed a psychosimulator test. I that these people should worship the sun. Rome had no sun worshippers. Flavius will guide you. Take great care 
The police are everywhere. May the blessings of the sun be upon you. Praise the sun. Just like Dark Souls. <laughs> There are some very interesting like camera angles and shots in this episode. Like some far away ones, that one where it was like close up but from below. Very interesting. Are you a slave, Flavius? Not to know of Flavius Maximus. I was the most successful gladiator in this province. Oh. I was trained to fight, but the words, the words are true. There are many things I'd like to know. <laughs> Fuck. Don't move. Hands in the air. Why was that so much louder than everything else in the episode? Oh my god. Like, I'm kind of struggling to hear their what they're saying a little bit, because when they talk, it's so quiet. And so I was just, like, really tuning in and zoned in, and then all of a sudden, boom! <laughs> Four fleeing fish. A fine haul. Well, I think our gladiator friend is a little bit rusty. Runaway slaves are always welcome. It's been a long time since I've watched barbarians die in the arena. Oh dear. We get to fight in the arena? Tell Maricus I'd like to see him. Tell him it's Jim Kirk. Well, if I am a friend and you don't tell him, do you really want to risk that? That look says it all. Poor Flavius. <laughs> he didn't trust us, and now look what happened. There always been discontent runaways? Long ago, there were rebellions, but they were suppressed. And with each century, the slaves... When the slaves began to worship the sun, when did all this happen? Long ago. Perhaps as long ago as the beginning of the Empire. The message of the sun, that all men are brothers, was kept from us. All men are brothers. So this sun worship thing, brotherhood, was before, like, before the six years ago? That's for the morning games. Come. I will not fight. I am a brother of the sun. I know you, Flavius. You're as peaceful as a bull. You three come with us. Outside. I doubt if he'll get very far. He feels ill. I do. I do? <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! Nice moves, Bones! They do well in the arena. This is our proconsul, Claudius Marcus. But this is no place for a reunion. Reunion. So they're recognized. Lots to explain. Yes, that would be nice. Don't judge me before you know the facts. Oh, too late. You can leave us. Strange decorations in this place. And a bed. Prepare food for our friends. They've come from a great distance. Oh, how about some bread? So, this is a Vulcan. What happened? We had meteor damage, Jim. He convinced me it would be unfair to this world to carry word of their existence elsewhere. Contamination. Can't risk that. So I made the decision to stay. What? There's been no war here for over 400 years, Jim. Let's say your land of that same era make that same boast. I think you can see why they don't want to have their stability contaminated by dangerous ideas of other ways and other places. And as for my men, those that were able to adapt to this world are still alive. Those who couldn't adapt are dead. You sent your own men into the arena? Just as I did, Jim, you're going to order your own people ashore. There may be over 400 men on your ship, Captain, but they can be brought down if it's handled properly. Oh, this guy knows too much. Your communicator, Captain Kirk. Issue the appropriate orders. They're going to be arriving soon anyway, Jim. A recon party, then a rescue party, then another rescue party. I had less men. It added up the same. But you would do almost anything, uh, rather than see these two dear friends put slowly to death. Ooh, but... Ooh. 
What is, what is he smiling about? Scotty here. Scotty, if you have a fix. Stand by, Scotty. Oh, he was gonna. Now, Captain, what are you going to order your men to do? Uh, you could probably defeat the combined armies of our entire empire and violate your oath regarding non-interference with other societies. I believe you all swear you'd die uh, before you'd violate that directive. Am I right? They did. Quite correct. Must you always be so blasted honest? He already knows. Merrick already told him. Your vessel could lay waste to the entire surface of the world. He even knows they're in the sky. <laughs> Bones is very upset. Order your officers to come down. Condition green, all's well, Kirk out. Guards, take them. Prepare them for the games. This is not an academy training test. This is for real. They're taking you to die. So this guy was so enamored by the by this Roman Empire that he decided to stay. But they have used the code term conditioned green, which means they're in trouble. But ah. it also prohibits my taking any action. Does Merrick know conditioned green means that? Pinpoint power source locations, type power load factors, and how much our beans will have to pull to overload them. No order can stop me from frightening them. <laughs> But it may suggest to someone just what a starship can really do. Aye. Aye. <laughs> oh, man. What? Oh, it's not even a real arena? It's not even a real coliseum? It's all movie magic. <laughs> love it when Scotty's in charge. I love it. <laughs> This does look like a circus, doesn't it? These bright shields made of plastic. And facing them, two favorites here from previous this encounters. One Flavius. Achilles yeah. and Flavius. Ah, oh, and Achilles. It's all fabricated. This is your program. You name the winner. Well, Flavius said he's he's peaceful now, but I'm sure his survival instincts will kick in. <laughs> Go easy on him, okay, Flavius? Bones isn't a, isn't really a fighting man. Off to a slow start, but he's never disappointed this crowd here. And there's a close one. The barbarian with a pointed ear seems to be in trouble. Now. Most of my men went the same way. I hoped I would feel it less with yours. <laughs> Bring this network ratings down, Flavius, and we'll do a special on you. Ready to order your men down, Captain. So they can fight too? I mean, I'm not sure how that's going to help. Maybe now you understand why I gave in, Jim. Oh, he was presented with the same option. The games have always strengthened us. Death becomes a familiar pattern. We don't fear it as you do. Did you fight in the games? <laughs> Defend yourself. I am defending myself. <laughs> I admit that you find these games frightening, revolting. Yes. For a console in some parts of the galaxy, I have seen forms of entertainment that makes this look like a folk dance. Yes, like dancing green Orion women. Right? He commands not just a spaceship pro console, but a starship. A very special vessel and crew. Need me help, Doctor. Whatever gave you that idea? <laughs> <laughs> Illogical question. I never heard in my life. <laughs> I do feel like uh, sometimes it seems like it might be a stunt double, though, for Bones. Your opinion, Mericus, after all, they're like yourself. Well, it won't go that easily for them, Captain. Or for you. How are we gonna get out of this one? And where's the bread? I am proconsul slave Drusilla. Although for this evening... For this evening, I was told I am your slave. 
Oh. Command me. Oh. Is this how they like slowly got Mark? What was his name? Merrick? I'm not cooperating. I may die, but you won't get any entertainment out of it. We're alone. Angry, Mr. Spock, or frustrated, perhaps? Such emotions are foreign to me, Doctor. I know we've uh, had our disagreements. Well, what I'm trying to say is you saved my life in the arena. Yes, that's quite true. I'm trying to thank you, you pointed-eared hobgoblin. You're welcome, I believe, is the correct response. <laughs> so cold. Remember that I'm entirely motivated by logic, efficiency of the enterprise, and there's no why you're not afraid to die, Spock. You're more afraid of living. Each day you stay alive is just one more day you might slip and let your human half peek out. And security. Why, you wouldn't know what to do with a genuine, warm, decent feeling. Really, Doctor? I'm worried about Jim, too. What a very intimate moment. Kind of steamy. Uh, close they got. <laughs> I do not wish to see you tortured in any way. Oh, speaking of steamy. Should we have our little talk now? You're a Roman, Kirk, or you should have been. <laughs> Would you leave us, Merrick? The thoughts of one man to another cannot possibly interest you. What is that supposed to mean? Because you are a man, I gave you some last hours as a man. I appreciate that. Defiance is intolerable, but I've learned to respect you. I promise you, you will die easily, quickly. I thank you. How nice of you. We guarantee you a splendid audience. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Before tonight's first heat, a simple execution. It's just an execution, oh boy. This guy. Make it a quick, single thrust. Where did uh, Merrick go? You are just oh, Flavius! Oh, oh no! Oh. oh my god. Activate. Flavius! No! What happened, Jim? What did they do to you, Captain? They threw me a few curves. No time to explain. <laughs> they threw me a few curves! <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> They're in each other's line of fire. I pity you, Captain Merrick. But at least watch and see how men die. So he just doesn't respect Merrick at all. <laughs> Marcus thinks he's just some kind of, like... I don't know. He's he's not a man. Starship locking on this. Three to be. Oh. oh, what what was he trying to do? Three to be. Oh, was Enterprise he? Enterprise to Captain Kirk. Was Ready he gonna to be try to? Three. He saved them. He was trying to save them. Jesus. Oh my God. Oh my God. Note commendation, engineering officer Scott. He obeyed the prime directive. Thank you, Captain. Hey. Captain, I see on your report Flavius was killed. I. Oh. Like that huge sun worshiper. Yeah. It seems illogical for a sun worshiper to develop a philosophy of total brotherhood. Well, don't you understand? It's not the sun up in the sky. It's the son of God. Oh. Caesar. And Christ. They had them both. It will replace their imperial Rome, but it will happen in their 20th century. Wouldn't it be something to watch, to be a part of? To see it happen all over again. That was an interesting little twist. Ah. <sighs> So they went to find Merrick and his crew, found that Merrick had interfered with this civilization in a way 
especially when it comes to Marcus. Marcus had a lot of information that he was not supposed to have, and I hope I'm getting their names right. So I guess Kirk wanted to deal with Merrick to take him, have him punished for his crimes, get him away from there, but what about the rest of the survivors of the Beagle ship? Are they not worried about them, I wonder? So Marcus was a consul, I think they said, and I just looked up what a consul is, and it says that a Roman consul was the highest elected public official of the Roman Republic. The Romans considered the consulship the second highest level of the Ursus Honorum, an ascending sequence of public officers to which politicians aspired after that of the censor, which was reserved for former consuls. So I'm not sure exactly what he was he does, but um, he was very powerful. This Marcus guy seems like kind of a seniority system to where the consul is only outranked by the consul or the the cursus honorum, which is like former consuls. Um, so the highest elected official. Okay. I wonder if Marcus had fought in the games before. Okay, I'm kind of like looking up little things here and there. I wanted to see what the purpose of the Colosseum was. Um, if it had any other purpose besides entertainment. And uh, I haven't really found that out yet, but I l I'm seeing an article here and I just noticed the very first sentence where it says the Colosseum, also named the Flavian Amphitheater, or Flavian, is a large amphitheater in Rome. So Flavian, that's where Flavius came from. So that's a cool little thing. Okay, so I was wondering if the Colosseum was used to like, not only for entertainment, but as kind of like for training. It looks like they did do like mock battles in there, so they probably did use it for some training. But as far as the gladiator fights, I think it was just purely for entertainment. It Marcus was making it sound here, unless I miss like heard or miss am misremembering what he was saying, that the reason that they become such a strong like empire is because of the Colosseum and the training that they went through and like the fighting, but it seems like mostly the people that fought in there were the slaves. But I was kind of thinking that those that did well in the Colosseum would also like rise to power. I was wondering if Marcus fought in the Colosseum like before he got elected and maybe that's why he was elected. He doesn't look like somebody who's like fit and muscular and um you know someone who would fight he, he looks kind of like the opposite where he just kind of sits back and indulges and is kind of a, a glutton for this entertainment maybe in his youth he was a really good fighter and now his life of ease and not wanting he's kind of slipped in that uh sense Whew, okay so merrick i'm not certain about exactly what is going on with him when he was first talking to kirk he made it seem like he agreed with um the way that they were doing things here and that he felt that he could flourish there but i was also kind of getting the feeling that he was maybe saying that just because marcus was there listening and he didn't want to show like his true intentions I wonder if he really did want to leave. He didn't want his crew to come down, but his crew ended up coming down. Search party, rescue party, search party, and there was just nothing that Merrick could do about it. I noticed that Marcus definitely had a great respect and admiration for Kirk as a man, as somebody who would fight for what he believes in, who stands by his morals, who stands by his code, and doesn't falter and you know he talked to kirk man to man he gave kirk his last night as a man and he kept saying to merrick that basically he didn't view him as a man that he wouldn't understand uh, uh anything or be interested in anything that a man and a man would 
would say to each other. So I took that as it could be one of two things. I don't think this is the answer, but it did cross my mind that it was a possibility that he was alluding to the fact that maybe Merrick was gay. I don't know. Probably not. I'm not sure what the purpose of that would be, but I think more likely, and what I was pretty much um, assuming and getting from this was that he knew that Merrick possibly didn't really want to be there, didn't really believe in what they were doing and how they did things, uh, but he was just too scared to stand up for his beliefs like Kirk did, so he just felt like he was just more like a pitiful creature than a man like Kirk. I could be reading it completely wrong, and I'm sure there's lots of different opinions on what exactly is going on here with these characters and their motivations and stuff. But let me know what you guys got out of that, what you guys think. I loved the scene with Spock and Bones in the jail cell. It was, like I said, very intimate. It was giving me flashbacks to when I first saw Spock do the mind meld in that very, like, close... You could feel the person, like, breathing on your skin kind of closeness. And uh, let me tell you, when Bones, like, swooped in close like that, I was like, wow, Spock, I, I wish that was me right now. <laughs> Efficiency of the Enterprise and they're all lying. You're not afraid to die, Spock. But yeah, when Bones was telling Spock that he believes that Spock is insecure, that he's more afraid to live and slip up than he is to die. And Spock looked very troubled, like Bones had actually come very close to the truth. And he didn't really have a retort to that. And you could see in Spock's face like Leonard Nimoy did a great job showing like this inner turmoil you could almost sense the struggle the conversation that he was having in his mind with himself going over these words that Bones was saying and contemplating them and thinking is he right what if and one last thing about the worshipers of the sun and I really liked how Uhura got a great little Part in the episode where she was telling them the reality of those sun worshippers and that it wasn't actually the sun but like the son of God and I was wondering just what kind of role Christianity had with the Roman Empire yes more research <laughs> it says uh, on this website that I'm looking at uh, on the history.com history channel the decline of Rome dovetailed with the spread of Christianity, and some have argued that the rise of a new faith helped contribute to the empire's fall. So it doesn't look like it's like for sure, but some people think it could be a possibility that Christianity did have something to do in big or small part to the fall of the Roman Empire. And yeah, I my brain is just going over and over on this episode. There is a lot that I really enjoyed that I want to pick apart, that I want to delve into deeper. I have a lot of questions and I have a lot of ideas and theories and they might not all be right. They might mostly be wrong, but the fact that it's getting me to think this much about it is a really good sign. I really, really, really liked this episode. I don't know if it's going to be like a top 10 for me, but I wouldn't be surprised if it is. I'm not sure. But I mean, Scotty did do an awesome job as acting captain. And <laughs> I loved his little speech of like, well, we're told not to interfere, but we can definitely scare him. I. <laughs> and then he gets a commendation at the end. I mean, there's not really much to not love about this episode in my eyes. I'm sure some of you guys, maybe it's not your cup of tea, but I hope a lot of you guys liked it like I did. So please tell me what you think. And uh, next time, hopefully next week, we will watch the final episode of season two, I believe. And that is going to be 
exciting some great fun and yes we're gonna close out another excellent season of star trek the original series as we make our way into season three so thank you guys very very much for being here for watching along with me i look forward to reading all your comments and we'll see you guys next time all right bye bye